Hi friends, it's Unicorn saying hi from my Monday new week new reading vlog. I really liked the reading vlog that I made last week, although it wasn't published yet. It's scheduled to publish tomorrow morning, but I really liked it because first of all, it really motivates me to read more when I was doing the vlog and talking to you guys all the time. And secondly, I feel like it's a really good way to capture my freshly thought just after I read a assumption assumption a section of the book that I was reading and. I feel like a lot of the thoughts or uh, comment I might just forget after a while if I don't record them. So that's a really good way to document my reading and talking to you guys, which I loved. So I'm gonna continue doing weekly reading vlogs if I can. And I have a couple of books on my TBR this week. So please excuse my chaotic desktop, but these are the TBR for this week. The first one is Empire of Pain. This is a continuation of last week. This is a nonfiction about the Sackler family uh, who was responsible for the opium crisis in America. And I thought I would finish this book last week, but I couldn't just because of the subject matter. It's not a book to binge read. And also because of there's so many egos to um, develop their family, the Sackler family, and also keep their wealth in the whole family. That really tears, make me really tiresome. So I couldn't finish it last week, um, but I'm gonna do it this week. And the second book, I kind of pick it up on a whim. It's called I Who Have Never Known Men. This is a dystopian novel and it's talking about nearly 40 women lived underground and they were guarded by some guard um, and they have no idea how they got there. They don't remember anything. And I was watching a video, I believe, and that is the only thing that I know to make me pick up this book. And the Third book I almost started reading last week is The Parable of the Sewer by Octavia E. Butler. This is another dystopian novel. It's talking about a girl whose family was the one of the few survivors families in the world and she does something and lead a lot of people to um, survive or discovering a new world or something. And I have always wanted to discover Octavia E. Butler's writing and this is my entry for her word. And the last book is The Mercies. This is a historical fiction set in Norway. I have also wanted to pick this book up for multiple times, but I just couldn't find the time. It's talking about a fishing village where all the men died one day over a fishing accident. So the leftover um, people are all women and children and they somehow needed to um, build a new order in order to survive. But one day a sinister man and his wife arrived in this village and disturbed the whole community. And this week I actually have an extremely busy and chaotic schedule. I not only have the things that I want to do in the normal work hours, but I also have things almost I think I have things planned every evening this week. For example, today I'm going to bring the two paintings that I finished last week to a open call and there were some like judges there to decide the, if they want to display the paintings in our library. It's actually why I was painting those. Um, I don't really have high hopes to be selected, but it will be a fun first time experience for me to submit for an open call. And tomorrow I have a figure drawing. On Wednesday I signed up to a board board game meetup, which is something that I started to do this year. I wanted to have like more physical contact with people, either with friends or like strangers, not physical contact, like physical interaction. <laughs> and on Thursday, of course, I have the Japanese class in the evening. And on Friday, I have a musical to watch. So and on top of that, in the morning, I have a cat sitting clients from Thursday to next Tuesday. I talked about it in a couple of videos ago that I started to do part-time cat sitting last year and uh, I have a client this week later, but um, that will only take uh, like an hour in the morning and I still will be able to have like the whole day following. But it's just something added on top of my already very busy schedule for this week, but I'm kind of looking forward to it. Sometimes I thrive over a busy schedule and sometimes I just completely get exhausted. So we'll see how the week is going, but I am going to be reading for sure and I'll update you later. Hey guys, it's about time for the open call and I wrapped up the paintings 
to in the soft clothes for them to be not damaged during transporting. And I can't believe that, but I am getting nervous and more and more nervous. I thought I wouldn't be nervous because I don't really have any hopes to be selected, but apparently I am still nervous because I think one of the reasons is that we are going to know the result tonight. We needed to、um, wait in the room for two hours to for it to be announced. So I thought I would just update you guys and also distract myself by doing this video update. And for the waiting time, I'm going to take "I Who Have Never Known Man" with me.、Uh, this is a pretty short book and very light, so I'm gonna just read this book in that room to calm myself down. Hi guys, it's another update time. You may think it's Tuesday, but it's actually already Wednesday. I was so busy yesterday. I was basically out the whole day,、um, so I didn't have time to check in. But I do have a lot of update. Half of the result of the open call, I was. My paintings were selected. I didn't expect that. Like I said,、um, I I was sitting there、uh, pretty nervously at the table when they were making the decisions, and then later on, my partner came to join me, and then we went to pick up my paintings. And when I entered the room, they were like, "Congratulations!" And I was so thrilled. And also, I found out that I thought it's a collective show、um, in the library, but it's actually a solo show. So I was、uh, given. I am. I will be giving. <laughs> um, I will be giving like a whole wall in the library to display only my paintings. There are rooms for about eight to nine paintings、um, of the size that I was painting, so I need to paint more for that. And the、uh, time of the exhibition, the duration is two months, so I'll have the wall to myself for two months, and I get to decide how to. Display them.、But、to be honest, I feel like a lot of the artists who submitted were selected. We each will give a two-month window in the library, so it's not only for me. But I, nonetheless, I'm still very, very happy, and I'm so thrilled to be a part of this. And、uh, you never know when what will happen when you put yourself out there, right? And that's the update for that. And I also have other. A lot of other life updates, but before that, let's talk about books because that's what we're here for. Yesterday, although I was really busy, I was able to finish the Empire of Pain, and this book, I. Said in the last vlog that I probably wouldn't give it a five star because I really give biography five stars, but it's not a biography. It's just the first part of the book is a biography, and the second part. I think this book has like three parts, and the second part and the third part went into the portrait of the family and eventually became a investigation、um, to the Sackler family because of their responsibilities to the opioid crisis in America. America. Everything got so intense, and a lot of things the family does really make me so mad.、Um, besides all the ethical of how like. Using the addictive nature of a painkiller to sell more and more and get people hooked and、uh, eventually kill people,、uh, with their painkillers they also have a lot more questionable and.、Um, Decisions. For example, when the market of the painkiller in America was plateaued, they decided to sell to other countries. One of the country is China, and the book didn't went very deep into the Chinese market, how the Chinese market is reacted to opioid. But it mentions that the Sackler family knows perfectly how China has a period of historical of opium、um, crisis. Back in the 1800s, when the Western countries went to China and sold a lot of opium to the Chinese market and basically get people addicted to opium, the Sackler family had a discussion about the Chinese opium crisis and、uh, then decided to do the same thing. To me, it's just so outrageous and so bizarre, you know. And another thing that really attracted my attention is the book mentioned not necessarily about the Sackler family but about America. It says African. Americans has been spread from the full brunt of the opioid epidemic. Doctors were less likely to prescribe opioid painkillers to black patients, either because they did not trust them to take their drugs responsible responsibly, or because they were less likely to feel empathy for these patients and want to treat the treat their pain aggressively. Although I'm Glad that black people weren't affected by the opioid crisis that much compared to other ethnicities, but. 
I'm speechless. Like how far can racial discrimination go in America? Like how? And also in the beginning of the book, on page 67, it says when the painkiller was just invented, it was targeting specifically to female patients. And what it really seems to offer, it was a quick fix of the problem of being female in the society. I like how this book has a lot of social commentaries to the medical field, either the when the medical medicine uh, industry was sexism or racism, but a lot of the facts just made me so angry. Yeah, I am so angry, but this is a really good book. I am going to give it a five star. And that means all of the four books that I have read in January, um, which is a good number, consider I didn't read it the first two weeks, I give at least three books five stars. The first book, I'm still thinking about it, but I, I did really resonate with it. So maybe it's just a five star month, which is really good and really what I needed. And I also have updates for the two other books that I started. Uh, the first, let's talk about I Who Have Never Known Men. This book is not what I expected. It's a lot darker because uh, in the synopsis we know that a bunch of women were locked in the room and they didn't know what happened and so far I'm only 30 pages in so I also didn't know what happened um, and also I don't know how to avoid spoilers at this point because I really have no idea what's going on in this book but it's a very good sound and it's dark and I like the discussions of their existence by the protagonist and that's all I can say for now. And I also started um, The Mercies. Um, I am only a couple of chapters in, but the accident of all the men died has already happened. And I think we got the sinister man in the picture already. And I also got um, feedbacks from this book on Instagram saying that it's a lot darker than they expected, which I didn't know either. I thought it's a historical fiction and it's talking about how the women survived after the, the accident, after how traditionally the men are the ones go fishing or something, but I didn't know there was like the darker side of the story, so I'm really excited. And I haven't started on the Octavia E. Butler's books just yet. I want to finish those two books, at least one of those two books first. But I did get very excited. Book mails yesterday, I have this. Women Recent Class. This is a fantastic nonfiction about feminism um, that I heard and so I got it and I'm really excited. I also got this Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, which the title is very self-explanatory, so I don't need to say anything uh, more about it, but I really, really want to read it. It's really intriguing to me and I think that tells you a lot about my life. <laughs> and I also have... Um, a lot of Chinese books that was delivered to me. I may do a book haul about them later, but I registered to one of the Chinese bookstores uh, where they ship overseas, and I finally got my first Chinese parcel, Chinese book parcel, in like 10 years. And then for the life updates, I have one update and one rent. Actually, the first one is I went to my dentist and I got the attachment for my Invisalign taken out. Uh, I was doing like uh, braces for the past year. It's actually not even a year. My whole session is not that long, but I got attachment on my teeth and I have to wear the Invisalign, which is an invisible braces for most of the time, but I'm finally done. So I got them taken out and they're looking great. I am really happy about it because they feel weird in your mouth. <laughs> and the rent is, so my printer is broken and I think it's not broken, it's just the printer head is a little bit clogged and I wanted to get it to clean. So I made a reservation with one of the electronic shops near me to clean my printer. I made the re reservation online. So I took my printer to the store yesterday and they saw me with the printer. They were like, we don't do printers. I was like, yeah, but I made a reservation online. Why did you, uh, didn't you just tell me when I made the reservation? And they were like, the people who made the reservation, they make the mistakes all the time, but we don't do printers. They're so cheap. Uh, so most people, when their printer has problem, they just buy a new one. And I was like, but it's just a tiny part that has a problem. You can fix it. And it's like, you can use it again. I have no, I see no reason to replace a 99% good electronic devices with a new one when you can just 
quickly fix it. And the guy was like, yeah, but people just do it. It's so, so cheap. And I was like, that's so wasteful. The guy was very unapologetically said, yeah, it's wasteful, but that's what people do. And, and then I called a couple electronic stores near me about that, and they all don't do printers. So apparently, when a tiny part broken, you just replace the whole thing. There's no such things about repair, about fix a problem. You just replace it. It's a huge, not a huge printer. I have a, like a mini home printer, but it's still a very large piece of electronic trash if you just replace it when you can quickly fix it, right? I don't know. I just feel like talking about we're worrying about climate change, we're worried about protecting the environment, and at the same time, some people, they just replace anything. And I was just speechless, and I, I look at the guy, I didn't know what to say, I was like, and I think the guy got very scared because I was staring at him, but yeah, and then I ended up searched for a cleaning kit online, I would just uh, try to cleaning my printers by myself, but it was so bizarre, I didn't know electronic repair shop that don't do printers at all just because they're cheap. I, it's beyond my imagination. Anyhow, that's the update of today. I'm gonna continue painting and reading and I'll talk to you later. Hi guys, it's Thursday. I know it looks not very different from yesterday, but I promise it's another day. I even put on a hoodie to prove that. <laughs> now that helps. But I have an update. I haven't read a lot of the I Have Who Never Seen Men, uh, but I have made great progress on the mercies. And let me tell you, I am so scared right now. I'm scared and nervous. I'm at page 230 of this book. This book only has 330 pages, so I have about 100 pages left. And I started to develop um, my careness to the people, characters in the story. And turn out we're following two perspectives. The first one is the women on the island who they have to make themselves efficient after all the men died in the fishing accident. And then we're also following the wife of this like the sinister man that I was talking about before. And we learned about her stories, and she came to this island with her husband and their interactions with the local people and the purpose of their arrival. And they started to, both parties started to learn each other, and I didn't expect there are so many political powers in this book. They're like different uh, political structures on the island um, existing already and there's this new one uh, who is stirring a lot of things on this island. And yeah, like I said, I am I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm scared of bad things will happen to good people. Um, I haven't, I don't know, I haven't expected that I will uh, care for the characters this much. I really, really don't want the story to go into the direction that I, I assume it will go to make things interesting. I have no idea. But I also got this comment on Instagram saying that this book is dark, right? So that's also added to my uh, nervousness to this book. So I have to update you because I am about to continue reading this book and I, I think I'll just finish it tonight. So I have to ca capture this moment where I'm really, I'm really scared. At this moment, I really want to know what happened, but I also don't want to know because it's really intense. <laughs> Guys, I'm having my Friday afternoon cup of coffee and ready to update you guys about the books that I'm reading. And I also have a problem which I have to discuss with you later on, but let's talk about The Mercies first because I have finished this book last night and things went so... Uh, I wouldn't say unexpected because I did see some of the events coming. I would say that I see 20% of what's happening coming. But before the ending, there are so many intense emotions and events that boiled underground. And when they burst out all of a sudden, I got so nervous. And I remember I was sitting in my studio and I couldn't move my eyes from the book. I, got, I, I have heavy breathing and I was just so, it was such an intense moment when I was reading the book, I haven't been constant, this concentrated in reading 
reading a book for so long, I could feel like I'm just sitting there and I cannot move until I finish the book. And there's an afterwards, uh, because this is a historical fiction, it's actually inspired by a real historical event that was going on. So um, I didn't know about that before I went into this book and I think you can go inside either way so it's your preference so I won't tell you what the event is about. So here comes the problem. I wanted to give this book a five star. That makes the first five books that I read this year a five star and that sounds amazing but also this morning when I was doing the cat sitting thing I was talking about I started to listen to the Parable of the Sewer. And this book caught me at the first page too. And after uh, a few paragraphs in, I was like, wow, I loved it already. So for the Mercies, the beginning of the Mercies is actually quite slow. It's like a slow burn. It's not something that will catch you right away. So your appreciation to the story actually grew later on. But for the Parable of the Sewer, I, I liked it already. And I'm about like 5% in. And the problem is, did I just lost my ability to critique books? Or I just happened to pick up like amazing books back to back? Because if you have watched my January wrap up, which is up this morning, I think, um, you'll know that the first four books I read this year are all five stars. And out of the four books, I would say only one of them are a little bit weaker. It's the I want to die, but I want to uh, eat table key. But it just feels so personal to me. It's talking about depression and all of that. And I was resonated with it a lot. That's why I gave that a five star. And the rest, three books are solid. And I have also given The Mercies five star and I'm liking this one. So I started questioning myself. I'm not sure at this point. Do I just, did I just lost my ability to critique books or I just like books because they're books. I don't know, but I do feel like I love them all. Maybe for this reason, I'll give this one a 4.5 stars. But also it's not fair. But if you think about it, I give the um, the story of the lost child in the Neapolitan uh, series, the finale, a five star. And that book is on the top. It's like the top level of writing. And that one is five star. If you compare that, if you uh, treat that book as a five star standard, this one is, of course, a little bit weaker. But it was just... I don't know. I think there's so many aspects when it comes to rate a book and you couldn't really have one solid stand. I don't know. It's, um, yeah, I have this problem now and I don't know how do I feel about it. But the thing is, I'm going to continue listening to... Oh, I'm going to continue listening to this book. I don't think I'll finish it in this vlog, but it's really gorgeous. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I found out this book. I know it's a dystopian novel set in California, but it says... When global climate change and economic crisis lead to social chaos in the early 2020s, California become full of danger. From pervasive water shortage to masses of vagabonds who will do anything to live to see another day. This is a novel that was written in 1993 and it's a science fiction. But it sounds like a reality nonfiction right now. So it's a little bit scary. Consider I also live in California and all of the things that in the setting has already happened. And the funny thing is in the beginning of the book, it says the nation is not nation anymore because everything kind of fell apart. But people are so obsessed with terraforming the space like Mars and the moon. It's just echoing with the reality. What can I say? We are living in the <laughs> dystopian science fiction right now. But besides this book, remember I was also reading the I Have Who Never Seen Man, and that book is really short, so I'm gonna try to finish it either tonight or tomorrow morning and conclude this reading vlog. Update you later. Hey guys, it's Sunday. This update came much later than I expected. I was out and about yesterday, and today um, I had something to do in the morning too, but I just felt really tired, and I had to take a nap in the middle of the day which is actually unusual for me and now I just feel like I don't have any stress hopefully I didn't catch anything but I do have the reading progress I have finished the book I who have never known man and this book blow my mind as well so 
I already talked about how I can't stop giving books five stars and this one I'm like it's another one of those cases. The beginning of the book didn't really catch me immediately and there were paragraphs where I was like um I don't know if I like the topic but turn out they were very important and I feel like I didn't even uh, describe this book really well. So the protagonist of the book, who is also the narrator, she was locked up her entire life since she can remember with another 39 women. So in the prison that they live in, there were uh, in total 40 of them, and she was the youngest. And she, because she was the youngest, so she didn't actually have a life before they got locked up. All the other older women, they remember their lives before they lived in that prison but she didn't remember anything because she grew up in the prison so she has a lot of confusions about what's what does a normal life look like um what does uh things mean and she didn't even have like an education where she wasn't taught to have a lot of skills because they were in the prison forever and ever things started with her questioning a lot of things in the prison and then turned out to be a book about um, I mean, meanings and existence and a lot of those things with unexpected development, I would say. Th that's the only thing I wanted to say because I feel like you don't really want to know a lot of things when you read this book. But I really loved it. So turn out this is another book that I wanted to give five star. Uh, but I decided to not giving any of the book that I read in February any stars until the end of February. I want to sit on it for a little bit to see because I also know that I have this tendency to give books that maybe not that great really high ratings if I didn't read anything for a while. So for in January, I gave all the books five stars and I did not read a couple of months before January, right? So I'm not sure if the books are also great again or I'm still in the period where I just wanted to give high ratings to um, books that I read, like any books that I read. But this turned out to be a really great reading vlog because I have finished three books. Um, so to recap, I did finish the book Empire of Pain, which I started in January and finished in the last day of January. I've already wrapped this up in the January reading wrap up. I'll link it down below if you want to check out my review. But great nonfiction about the opioid crisis in America, about the Sackler family, and great discussion about society responsibility and calling out the sexism and racism in the medical industry. And I also finished the novel The Mercies, um, talking about a village in Norway in the 1600s uh, when all the men died in a fishing accident. The women who was left in the village, they needed to um, develop their living skills and then one day a sinister man and his wife came to the village. A great historical fiction based on a real event that I didn't know before I finished the book and I really loved it. It's a slow burn at first and everything boiled up during the process. I really enjoyed it and it was so intense in the end and I am as I said just now I also finished this book of course but I am also in the middle of why is this book always upside down in the middle of the parable of the sewer by Octavia E. Butler I'm really enjoying this book so that's another book that I can see maybe I'll give it a five star I don't know turn out all the books are five star for me I will just call my channel five star reading bookish land jokes aside great reading week and I hope I will feel better tomorrow and thanks you guys for joining me and stay healthy stay safe I'll see you in my next bookish video bye